Hello Nidorinos and Nidorinos and welcome to the Sinnoh region where today we have the Snow Point Frost hosting the Viridian Fissure. The Fissure are going to start out with Flygon and Seismito today, whereas the Frost are going to start out with Arctivish and Cryogonal. And let us know in the comments below who you think is going to win, the Snow Point Frost or the Viridian Fissure. The battle between these two teams is almost a race to the bottom, so they both need a win because they are having terrible seasons. Cryogonal is going to start out with a Gunk Shot, and it's going to target Seismito by the looks of it. Doesn't do a great deal of damage to the water ground type though, being not very effective. However, it does leave Seismitoad poisoned, so this is could have very big implications later on in the battle. Flygon, Dragon Ground type's gonna go with entrainment, so it doesn't actually go for an offensive move. Instead, targeting Arctivish changes its slush rush to levitate, so Arctivish is now immune to ground type attacks. Seismitoad goes with the shore up, so it's gonna restore the health it actually just lost. So this could be a very good move by Seismitoad, but it's still going to be taking damage from that poisoning. Arctivish is the slowest Pokemon on the field, but it's going to go with a Mac Punch. So it goes for a move based on speed as we get Seismitoad taking damage from that poisoning. Now, as always, this is a 6 on 6 metronome battle, and if we hit that 20 minute time limit, we will go into single battle overtime. Viridian Fisher have actually gone into overtime before. Unfortunately, they did not win that day, but Krogan was going to go with an Electrify, targeting Flygon. So Flygon's moves are going to be Electrified, as it now goes with its turn for a Metronome. It's going to go with a Night Daze. Looks like it is going to target Krogan there. Doesn't do a great deal of damage to the Ice-type Pokemon, however. Seismitoad goes with a Shockwave. Also targeting Krogan, you have to think it might have been better if it targeted Arctivish with that water typing. Arctivish is going to respond with a Blizzard. It's going to get a stab boost from this, and this will be super effective. A huge hit. Flygon is eliminated from that super effective move. So that's a brilliant start for the Snow Point Frost. They have won one game this season, and that was three games ago over the Golden Lord Giants. They need a victory today. As the Viridian Fissure send out Golok, the Ghost Ground type. So Golok is immune to normal and fighting type attacks through that Ghost typing. It has been a big benefit to it in previous matchups. As Krogan will steal with the speed advantage, goes for a Shockwave, which isn't going to affect anyone on the Ground type Viridian Fissure as they are immune to electric type attacks. Crab Hammer coming from Seismitoad. Goes for Arctivish. Not very effective on the Water Ice type. Golok now with its opportunity. Golok has 124 attack stat, so it can do massive physical damage and it goes with a Fell Stinger onto Cryogonal. Huge hit, taking Cryogonal down into the red, gets that critical hit. No wonder it was so powerful. But Cryogonal is holding on there. Clanging scales coming from Arctivish. It's going to hit both Seismitoad and Golok, and it even takes Seismitoad down into the red. That poisoning from Seismitoad could actually finish it off here, and it does! Seismitoad is eliminated due to that poisoning. That did have big implications later on in the matchup. As I said earlier, I was not expecting it to take it out though. I thought somebody else might physically do it, but we get another ground ghost type coming out, and it's Runarigus. So this combination of Runarigus and Golic could have big hopes as they have three immunities each being immune to, as I said, electric ground. Uh, sorry, electric normal and fighting, and there's that immunity coming to advantage as we get a cross poison coming from Golurk. Targeting Arctivish, huge hit again by Golurk. Arctivish with its opportunity to respond. Goes with the snipe shot, now this should be super effective. Targets Runarigus, takes Runarigus down into the red, but Runarigus is holding on there. That would have been massive if it had been a one hit wonder, getting the eerie impulse now coming from Runarigus, targeting Cryogonal. This should actually finish it off. I apologize, it's not an offensive move, it just lowers Cryogonal's special attack. Cryogonal again, still with the speed advantage, the quickest Pokemon actually on the Snow Point Frost, and it goes with a Slack Off, very good time to use a Slack Off. Boost that HP back up into the green. Go it now. Might try to knock it all the way back down, goes with a Shadow Sneak. So we'll get that stab boost being dark type. Gets Krogonal back down into yellow with that big hit. But again, that was very beneficial of Krogonal to restore its health. 
Again, Arctivish goes for a move that doesn't impact the Viridian Fisher as we get a superpower coming from Runa Regis. Targets Arctivish and Arctivish is eliminated by that super effective move. Runa Regis has lowered its attack and defense in the process, but Arctivish is out of this matchup. Now we have the Evolution Glaceon coming onto the field for the Snowpoint Frost. Now Viridian Fisher sitting 16th. They've only won two games in this whole season, so they are above. Snowpoint for us by two, but he desperately needs some victories. Nobody wants the first ever wooden spoon in the Elite Challenge League. Glaceon now goes with a high horsepower. Targeting Golok gets it down into the yellow there. Golok has that opportunity to respond now. And it's going to go with a double team, so Golok's going to boost its evasiveness. It's going to be very beneficial if you can avoid attacks. Runeregus now, so the speed advantage massively on the side of the Snowpoint Frost. And we get a Hydro Pump coming from Runeregus. And it looks like it's... Oh, it's going to target Kragnall. I thought it was targeting Glacial there. Gets Kragnall back down into the red where it was previously, but Kragnall is still hanging on in this battle. This may be the last move we see Kragnall take, do if it takes any damage. And it goes for a Thunderfang, and again, doesn't affect the ground types. Those immunities that Runeregus and Golok have are so impressive. Get a sparkling area now coming from Glacier, and it's going to hit everyone on the field, but Golok actually avoids the attack. So Glacier will take out its own teammate in Cryagonal. Cryagonal has finally been taken out of this battle, and Runeregus will be eliminated as well. So that's now three Pokemon down for the Runeregus Fissure, two down for the Snowpoint Frost, and Golok has its chance to target Glaceon. It's going to go with a flying press. And a massive hit on the Glaceon, super effective, that flying slash fighting type. Yes, it is a joint type attack, as we have done Manitan come out onto the field for the Snowpoint Frost, and Swampert come onto the field for the Viridian Fissure. Swampert, very susceptible to grass type attacks, it is a water ground type. Dark Manitan has that Zen mode, which we have seen a number of times here. We've never seen the, uh, sorry, we've never seen the Unovium form on this Cinnabar Flare, but we've seen the Zen mode on the snow point for us as we get a throat chop coming from Glaceon. Target Swampert. Doesn't do a great deal of damage, however. Swampert with its opportunity to make an impact in this battle goes with a guard split. Yeah, it does target Glaceon there. It could have actually finished it off if it had gone for an offensive move. Maybe Golok can take advantage. Goes with a tailwind, so this is only going to boost the speed of the Viridian Fissure. So for the next few turns, the Viridian Fissure will be going first with that Tailwind behind them. Swamp it now. It's going to go with Amnesia, so it's going to boost its defenses. Again, not going for an offensive type move. Sorry, it boosts its special defense. Golok now. It's going to go with a Night Daze. And again, if this targets Glaceon, but instead it goes for Darmanitan. That Zen mode does come into effect if it goes below 50% of its health, so if it goes into the yellow, we will see that Zen mode activate. Get a weather ball now, but it doesn't affect Golok because there's no weather, so it would have just been a normal type move. Glaceon's gonna go with a pollen puff. Targeting Golok here. Not very effective, but actually did more damage than I was expecting to. Golok's still in the yellow though. Now, as always, in our description below, we do have a link to our Instagram page. We can get regular ladder and fixture updates, as well as our match of the week, and we get a hurricane coming from Swampert, but Dimanitan avoids that attack. Golok now goes with the fake out, and that will also fail. This is big for the Snowpoint Frost. They're going to take no damage this turn. As we get a stun spore, but Swampert avoids that attack. So everybody's dodging moves this turn. Glaceon, still hanging in there, goes with a fire fang. This won't be very effective on the ground types. But it gets Golok down into the red, but Golok is still just holding on. Glaceon's still hanging on in the red as well. Dimanitan and Swampert are in the green. Swampert needs to finish Glaceon off. And it's going to go with a Zen Headbutt. Looks like it's going to target Glaceon, and it will, and it gets the job done. So Glaceon is eliminated, so it's all tied up here now. Both teams with three Pokemon left. Golok with the chance to target Dimanitan solely, and it's going to go for a Smart Strike. Should be super effective. And it's a massive hit. Darmanitan is eliminated. We will not see the Zen mode today. Darmanitan and is taken out and the Viridian Fissure have taken the lead. As we have Lapras, the Ice Water type, come onto the field. And we have another Ice Water type in Warring come onto the field for the Snowpoint Frost. 
you know, with those water typings, it can be very advantageous for the Snowpoint Frost. They need to get some water moves, especially on the Golurk, as Warring goes with a Worry Seed on the Golurk. So, Golurk's ability will change to Insomnia and it won't be able to fall asleep. So, we will not be seeing a rest performed by Golurk today. Lapras now goes with a Trick or Treat, so it's going to add a Ghost Typing. You have to think it's going to be adding that Ghost Typing, it does, to Swamp it. So there are now two ghost types on the side of the Viridium Fissure. As Swampert sets up the Psychic Terrain, this is actually going to give a boost to Psychic type moves. Now Golurk with its chance. It's going to go with the Baby Doll Eyes, so it doesn't go for an offensive move. This can buy the Snow Point for us some time. Those Baby Doll Eyes going for Lapras, what was its attack stat? Also in our description below, we do have a link to our Google Doc, which contains the ladder, fixture stats, and all the team rosters as Warring goes with a roar of time. This could do massive damage. Targets Swampert, and it actually does very minimal damage. Swampert's still in the green, barely taking any damage as it goes for a Bone Meringue. Targeting Warring, hits once. Hits twice, and Warring is down into the yellow from those two hits. Very impressive there. By Swampert, even getting the stab boost from the ground type move. Lapras goes for an acid armor, so it's just going to boost its defenses here. Got like with its opportunity. It's going to go with a Dark Pulse. Going to target Warring. So Warring taking more damage from the Viridian Fissure this turn. Lapras is still at full health, whereas Warring is down in the yellow. Golurk's still hanging on there in the red. Whereas Warring has to recharge this turn. Viridian Fissure could take advantage. It's getting an Aqua Ring from Swampert, so it's going to be restoring its health in between turns. Now Lapras goes with a Hammer Arm. Doesn't affect Swampert though due to it being a Ghost type now. So it wasn't actually going to impact Viridian Fissure whatsoever as we get a Grass Knot coming from Golurk. Targeting Lapras. Very good hit. Super effective on the Lapras there. Now the heavier Lapras was, the more damage that would have done. So, didn't even get it down to half its health. Imagine if it was twice as heavy as it was, it would have been a huge hit. Now we got Warring going with a Throat Chop. This should finish Golurk off, and it does, so Golurk will be eliminated. We're down to the last two Pokemon for the Viridian, for the Viridian Fissure. It is now a 2 versus 2 battle. Lapras with an opportunity though to solely target Swamp It, but its move burn up fails. Swamp it with a response is gonna go with the Dragon Rush. Targeting Lapras. And Lapras is taken down into the yellow there as Swamp it restores some health from that Aqua Ring. Last Pokemon now will be coming out for the Viridian Fissure. And it's Mamoswine. Highest ground type in his Mamoswine. It's very weak to fighting type attacks. The Mammoth Swine comes on with 130 base attack, so it's very physical, and it has the speed advantage on the field as it goes for a Spore, targeting Lapras here. So Lapras will be put to sleep. This is very good, because Viridian Fissure will then only have to worry about one target at the moment, and that's Warring. Warring going with the Leaf Blade. If it targets Swampert, you think it'll finish it off. And it does! Massive, super effective hit onto Swampert. So the Snowpoint Frost have taken the lead right at the end of this battle whilst Lapras is still asleep. This is huge. Snowpoint Frost have a big opportunity as the Psychic Terrain leaves the battlefield. Mamoswine has the speed advantage and it is at full health. Both Warring and Lapras are in the yellow, but there is two of them. Lapras needs to wake up. Mamoswine needs to take them both down very quick as it goes for a Mystical Fire. Targets Warring there. Gets Warring down into the red, but Warring is still hanging on whilst its special attack is lowered. Warring now goes with the power split, so it's not even going for an offensive move. Lapras is still fast asleep as well, so Snowpoint Frost have not had a very positive turn. Mamoswine doing very well, going with a physical move. Needs to finish off Warring here, surely. Take advantage of the fact that Lapras is still asleep. Instead, Mamoswine goes with a, with, with, with a withdraw. So it's going to boost its defenses here as I finally get those words out. 
and Warrain goes with the Simple Beam, so it's only going to change Mamoswine's ability. So with the Simple Ability, its stats will be able to go up twice as much as normal, but they can also be lowered twice as much as normal. And Lapras finally wakes up. Very crux time in this battle as it goes with a Poison Jab. Very minimal damage at all to Mamoswine, who practically shakes it all off. Mammoth Swine still with that speed advantage. This could have big implications. It needs to go for something physical. It goes with a burn up, but it does fail. Stunpoint Frost needs to take advantage of this. There are two of them. As we get a Brave Bird coming from Warren, it's going to get recoil damage from this. A decent hit, and Warren is still holding on after that recoil damage, so this is big. Because any damage Warren takes, you have to think from now, it will be eliminated. But we get a Rock Tomb coming from Lapras. Which will lower Mammoth Swine's speed. If Warrior's now quicker, this could be huge. It needs to be faster, and it is. So Warrior's now quicker than Mammoth Swine. And it goes with a pluck, so it's going to take Mammoth Swine's Leopard Berry. Proceed to eat it right in front of it as Mammoth Swine is taken down into the yellow. Slimepoint and Frosty are chipping away at Mammoth Swine. Vipress now goes with a horn attack. Again, they're continuing just to do that little bit of damage every time to Mammoth Swine. Mammoth Swine now the slowest Pokemon on the field goes with the Aromatherapy, so it doesn't go for the physical attack again. Both Warus, Warring and Lapras, Warus, sorry, <laughs> what a tag team, are quicker than Mammoth Swine. Warring going first goes with the Simple Beam again, which we've already seen. So what a waste of a turn there by Warring. Lapras with its chance. Goes with a shift gear, so it's also just going to be boosting its stats. It's going to raise that speed greatly as we get our three minute warning. So, if we hit that 20 minute time limit, as I said earlier, we're going into overtime, which the Viridian Fisher have been to before, and would be good for the Sniper and Frost just to get some points. But we're going to get a pin missile from Mammoth Swine, hit Slapras once, there's twice, only hits two times. So, again, Warrior Lapras with that speed, they need to either hang on or get this elimination. Lapras going first. Goes with a takedown. And Mammoth Swine is taken down into the red as Lapras gets that recoil damage. Warren, now with its chance, goes with a Thunder Fang, but it doesn't affect the ground type. So Mammoth Swine avoids the attack there. Mammoth Swine's going to go with a Heat Wave. This should hit both Warren and Lapras. And Warren has been eliminated, and Lapras is down into the red. So it is now a 1v1, and both of these Pokemon are just hanging in there. Two minute warning now, though. It is the last two Pokemon on the field. Lapras going first, goes with a Fell Stinger, so it's going for an offensive attack. And Mamoswine holds on, it is just hanging in there. This is its chance, Mamoswine needs to go for something offensive, it's going to go with the Grassy Glide. Can this get the job done? You think it will. And it does! Lapras has been eliminated with a super effective move. Mamoswine gets the much needed victory for the Viridian and Fissure. After just hanging in there, a huge win for the Fissure there. What a start by the way, seeing that Blizzard early on taking Fly going out. Very great, and that poisoning coming into effect. So it's not point for us to actually start it off really well, and again they just could not get the job done. That is their 10th loss of the season. They do not want to repeat that again, but next week they're going, they're, they're staying in the Sinnoh region, but they're going to Heart Home City. They're facing the Heart Home Horns next week, who can be a very dominant side. I do not have high hopes for Snowpoint Frost, but in a metronome battle, anything can happen. We shall find out next week. Whereas the Viridian Fisher get their third win of the season, only their third, but a win's a win, keeping themselves further away from the bottom of the ladder. But next week, they're going to be hosting the Four Tree Flyers, who are hanging around in the eight. So you have to think the advantage is going to be on the Flyers' side, who will be also immune to the ground-type attacks. But again, this battle very back and forth. That Leaf Blade, some grass-type attacks coming massively into effect in this battle. Taking Swampert out, that was a huge hit. But Mammoth Swine coming through with a elimination of Warring and then finishing off Lapras after hanging on after that fell stinger. That was massive. So well done to Mamoswine getting the much needed victory for its team. 
But as always, Nidorinos, Nidorinos, thank you so much for watching. Let us know in the comments below who you thought was best on field. And if you like what you saw, please leave a like, share, subscribe. And always remember, you are awesome and I will speak to you next time.